cannot tell you the amount of times I ask people, you, what do you like to do for fun? And they say, oh, I'm boring. And I'm like, okay, well, conversation ended. I will bring up your groceries in silence. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Fess Up. I am Amy. I'm Marissa. And I'm Ina. And we are the Fess Sisters. The Fess Girls. Um, Fess Up is a discussion about absurd conversation starters by some sisters who don't see each other enough and think we're funny. <laughs> are we funny? The world may never know. Some people say yes. That sounds like, that was like a, oh, that's licks that it takes to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop. The world may never know. <laughs> One, two, two, three, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> My mom thinks I'm funny. Oh, wait, no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> no, our mom does not think we're funny. Mom does not appreciate our humor. I don't know. Has she listened to it, like, alone, alone? I don't think so. No. What say we hop right in like some chickens doing a skinny dip? I don't think that's a saying. <laughs> <laughs> How do the chickens get naked? I think that's the least of our questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> I meant chickens as in like they were afraid to skinny dip. Sure you did. Like humans afraid to skinny dip. Sure you did. Because then they get pushed in, you know. I don't okay, believe bye. you. Bye. That doesn't make any sense, Amy. I'm going to ask a question. Amy's just dumb. <laughs> Amy just wants to talk about nudity at all times. I just really do, okay? <laughs> the truth comes out. Don't we all do the truth? Yeah. yeah. And now the listeners do too. I mean, I feel like they should already from episode one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they didn't gather it then they know now the three things we know number one clay reese best ship number two dennis quaid is always watching number three i like to talk about nudity the first two are both my things so i feel like i'm the winner of this podcast so far yeah where is the ina representation well, i didn't know this was a competition podcast it's it's not it's not a competition but if it were i would win where the points don't matter <laughs> Whose line is it anyway? <laughs> yeah. Fess up where everything's made up and the points don't matter. I think Ina, this is a freebie. I think Ina is Drew Carey. I am uh, Ryan Stiles and Marissa is Colin, Colin Mockery. Mockery. Yeah. Hey, I feel like I'm more of a Wayne Brady. We all think we're Wayne Brady, but are we? <laughs> no, I'm a Ryan Stiles. I could be a Colin Mockery, but I'm, I'm pretty Ryan Stiles-y. I am fully aware of this. Marissa, you've just got to accept that you're grumpy. <laughs> it's a sore <laughs> subject for me because one time, one of my friends told me that I look like Colin Mockery, and I have never gotten over it. Wait, who said that? One of my friends. I'm not going to name Blaster on this podcast, but... Said you looked like Colin Mockery? She did. <laughs> I look like Colin Mockery because I have the cheekballs. And the blonde hair. I feel like if Amy shaved her head, she would look like Colin Mockery. Right? This is one of the many reasons I can't shave my head. Well, anyone if they shave their head. <laughs> I've also been told since the first episode of the podcast aired that I am not allowed to shave my head because I would look like, and I quote, a testicle. So. <laughs> That was Ashley, thank you. Um, friend of the show, Ashley. Uh, but yeah, so I can't shave my head. I will be a testicle and also call a mockery. But isn't Thanos your style icon? So isn't that what you're going for? Thanos, you know, here's the thing. He is my style icon. He's actually like Queer Eye, but if Queer Eye were won exclusively by Marvel villains and only Thanos. Queer Eye, but before Jonathan grew that terrible, terrible mustache <laughs> and made me no longer able to watch the show. No! <laughs> you can't watch it just because of his mustache. Honestly, every time I see it, like, I have to look away. It ruins the whole show Aww. for me. There are some people who can grow a mustache and some people who can't. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, that's the worst mustache I've ever seen and he's gonna give other people style advice? John Jonathan Get out is of here, Jonathan. fantastic. I'm coming for Marissa. you. <laughs> I am team Jonathan here. Okay, I like him as a person, but I question his fashion choices 500%. On this note, um, this was not a question that I planned in my planning, but this ties right into what we're talking about. If you had the ability to grow facial hair, how would you style it? 
I think I would go for the classic, like, light stubble look that stops mm-hmm. you from looking like a baby, but, like, still looks kind of clean and fresh. I would want to look like uh, the Pringles man. <laughs> so, like, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm Team Jonathan Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> You know, here's here's the thing. I would go mutton chops. I can see that. That is a bold decision. I can see you with mutton chops. Thank you. <laughs> I very much think we should bring mutton chops back. Um, <laughs> hashtag free the mutton chop. Is that a thing? It is now. <laughs> free free the, the mutton, mutton chop. chop. The- Where is it caged? When I was a child, I always loved Fu Man shoes. Fu Man shoes are also a good uh, style. So, yeah. We're the new queer eye, but can, we're bi eye? Does that work? <laughs> bi eye. I mean, I, we're still queer. Yes, but see, okay, I want to take a moment to just shout out Anthony for being pansexual. I feel you. Heck yeah, pansexuals, best sexuals. Also, he's super cute, so, I mean, he's winning all the games. Hell yes! Queer eye is not a competition, but if it were, he would win. <laughs> 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 Queer Eye, where everything's made up and the mustaches don't matter. Or do they? Because they matter to me. Apparently they do. (laughs) You can't rip Queer Eye like this. I love that show. It's a great show. Jonathan, please shave your mustache and I will once again watch Queer Eye. I'm getting offended. All right, we got to move on before Ina goes square on us. It's too late. (laughs) That's a good question because it shows you someone's sense of style and so if they like to have a jonathan mustache that's a red flag excuse me yep red flag <laughs> yeah so ina is now a, a miss not appearing in this podcast <laughs> because she's a jonathan <laughs> i mean i never said i liked his mustache i just think it's rude of you to insult it she technically said Mr. Pringle mustache. Mr. Pringle yes. I did. has a very voluptuous mustache. She did. She did say that. Jonathan's is thinner. Than like that. she was not going for the Jonathan. She was going for the Mr. Pringle. Okay. So she gets a free so pet. Whether or not she can grow the Mr. Pringle. But we all have a pretty. Our father has the single best mustache I've ever seen. So he's got better than Tom Selleck. Better than Tom Selleck. It is. It's iconic. Yes. He looks like Bob from Bob's Burgers as a human. <laughs> but more beautiful. More beautiful and the mustache more more voluptuous. All you need to know when imagining our father is he's the most handsome, wholesome, pure being. He's a pure being. But yes, so because of his mustache growing skills, I think we all would have good luck with mustaches. You're right. So I'd have full Mr. Pringles. You're right. You know are my <laughs> butter stick. stick. We were not supposed to when reveal our I whose line is it anyways obsession yet. Quick. Let me take some butter off you and <laughs> let me wipe, wipe you, you. Butter stick. stick. You're, You're my butter stick. stick. <laughs> okay. All right. We're good now. I have a question, and it is, what is the silliest thing that you believed as a child? Oh, man. Mm. See, that's a very, very hard question because I believed so many demented things. The first thing that came to my head was I used to think that every time you watched a movie, the actors actually had to come together and react it out <laughs> for you. That's a hard job. So whenever someone told me an actor was dead, I was like, but I can just watch their movie and they'll be alive again. And so I was really confused about that. They live on, literally. That is how it works, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So movies uh, were uh, Ina's form of necromancy as a child. <laughs> Apparently so. Yes. <laughs> um, I believed that there was this little flashing light that traveled along your veins. And when it stopped, it would heat up your skin from the inside and it wouldn't hurt you. It would just make you mildly itchy. And that was how you could ha- that's what happened when you got an itch. It would pause. <laughs> and because it was <clears throat> emitting heat, it would just heat up your skin and make you itch. And when you itched it, it would restart it. And go around some more. 
How come you've never shared this before? I have 100% shared this. I've never heard this. Honestly, I feel like this is fascinating and I have not, I don't remember it. I 100% have told this many a time. I, it sounds vaguely familiar. Like you told me when I was eight years old and never since. Maybe you only told Marissa. <laughs> See, that's probably what it was. I maybe never brought up again, but I thought it for a while. Oh, man. I'm having a hard time, like, thinking of something good. Like, the, the first thing that came to my mind is kind of a dumb one. When I was younger, I used to think that the air coming out of air vents were just, like, witches that were invisible. Oh! So I, I didn't like going near the air grates for... A brief phase in my life because I thought they were witches touching me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I used to think that if I wasn't out of the bathroom before the toilet finished flushing, I would get eaten by a monster. Uh, so I had to wash my hands before I flushed the toilet. That was like me. I thought <laughs> I would get eaten off the toilet like in Jurassic Park. I mean, I was afraid of the dark, wow. thinking that something would manifest behind me and like stab me in the back. So I would always run through the darkness with my hand on my back to protect me as if a knife couldn't go through my hand. Remember, I think it was Sydney, I want to say. Somebody growing up said that there was a squirrel inside of traffic lights. Yeah. Yeah, no, she she did think that and then that made me think that for a long time too. Ah, you were gullible. Yes. Well, I have a follow-up question to this and it's mostly only said so I can share something, but what is something that you made up as a child that stuck in your family? And for me, that was the fact that I, like, went through a phase where I wanted to be somebody who, like, named things. At, like, I wanted to discover something new. So I looked through and I was like, there's no name for the little divot that appears under your nose but above your lip. Um, <laughs> there's no name for it. This is the best so one. So I looked in a couple books. I didn't see anything, but admittedly I was looking in children's books that don't even think about it. <laughs> so I named that little divot the Poof. The P-O-F-E, the POF. Our whole family calls it the POF now because of me. So, thanks. It's the POF. It is the POF. I know that scientifically it's called the philtrum, but, mm -hmm. I mean, colloquially it's the POF. Colloquially, the POF, and I think that we need... Colloquially? 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 I can't pronounce Colloquial. that word. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Um, it's called the POF, <laughs> spread the word, hashtag free the POF. Free the Pove. Free the Pove. Why is everything hashtag free? I, that's, that's the hashtag I'm feeling today. Why can't it be hashtag touch the Pove? Okay, hashtag touch the Pove. But here's the thing. If we say hashtag free the Pove, it might um, spur your boy Jonathan to shave his mustache off so he can free his Pove. Oh my gosh, Jonathan, please free your Pove. <laughs> you have such a beautiful face. You don't need to hide it under there. Free the Pope. Free that Pope. I feel like Jonathan's going to roast you on Twitter <laughs> if he ever hears about this. He can, he can go ahead. I'm easily roastable. Easily combustible. But apparently so is his mustache. See, but the only problem is I don't have like a personal Twitter account, so That's I can't true. like reply. Just have to at our accounts. <laughs> Maybe by the time he hears this, you will. We'll have to take some time before we're going to get to the level where Jonathan might see this podcast. Yeah, no, I don't think he will. He probably won't even have the mustache anymore at that point. Probably true. That will be a blessing upon us all. Maybe he will He will be looking at this episode fondly like, I'm glad they hated the mustache because I also hated that mustache. See, like, I love that he's living his best life, but his face is ruined by the mustache. <laughs> um, okay, so that was my answer. The poof. Did any? Did either of you guys have anything that stuck in our family? I'm sure I had many. The first one that comes to mind is kind of lame, but I remember I just decided one day to call our Uncle Rob, Uncle Robbo. Yeah, that stuck. And that spread <laughs> to the point where his own mother started calling him Robbo. <laughs> so that's a winner. That is a winner. Also, um, you did start up interrupted my speaking. Okay, see, but that's not something we say on the reg. You're right. It's just something we make fun of all the time. True. When I was a young girl, I did not like to be interrupted, as I shouldn't, but 
<laughs> Anytime someone interrupted me, I'd go, excuse me, you interrupted my speaking. I really like the voice you put on because it sounded like an old woman instead of a baby. Urkel. <laughs> Urkel, I guess. Yeah. Ina, did you have anything that caught on? I mean, not really. I feel like I was mainly just copying you guys my whole life. Yeah, you were. I mean, like, I'm sure there's something, but I can't think of one right now. My whole childhood was blackmailing you guys um, by telling mom that you guys did bad things to me so that you'd play Polly Pockets and I could just watch you play play Polly Polly Pockets. Pockets. Yep. Yep. I didn't even really play. I mean, like, I did, but I didn't. I just watched you two play. You know, I never really knew that, <laughs> but I'm glad because we didn't include you as much as we should have. We did not. No. See, no. that's the thing is that's why I think I'm such a listener because in games, you never included me. So I, when we would play games, it really just ended up being at, at that point, I thought games were uh, just watching you guys play game and <laughs> not uh, participating like baby mom. That was a fun time. You liked baby mom. You did not like baby mom. You protested profusely no i didn't like baby mom but that that made it really a uh, <laughs> set in stone you know that doesn't get to participate <laughs> we we would make her baby mom so she could not talk in the games because she was a baby yeah because i wanted to be the mom so i could tell you guys what to do yeah and then and then you guys said I was a baby, and we strictly follows the followed the rules of yes and, so I was a baby, and I couldn't <laughs> say anything. And you were always mad about that, as you should have been. Yeah. We were the dolphin girls, I think. I thought we were the amazing girls. We were the girls. amazing girls. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And every car we saw, or like every stranger we saw, were like the evil villains Ursula, Morgana, and their third sister, Coca Cola. <laughs> Coca Cola! <laughs> I don't know why we named her that, but it stuck. <laughs> she looked also like a merwoman with an octopus bottom. Yeah. Like that's what we said she was, but I always just imagined her as a large Coke bottle. <laughs> I always just imagined her as Ursula, but like Coca-Cola colors. I imagined her, this is really weird, as a actual Coke can inside of a robot body. Oh. Wow. Now I'm just imagining like Mojo Jojo, but like instead of a brain in his tank, it's like a Coke can. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Basically. Except it was more like in Avatar when the guy is walking around in that suit and it does everything he wants. It was kind of a Mm. suit like that and it was just a Coke can instead of the guy. Right. All right. Moving on. It's a good question because it lets you know how weird this person can be. Like, and their deep, truest selves, which is, you know, children. Mm Mm-hmm. And it can let you know if you potentially had children with this person, whether your children would be just super stupid or not. Or, like, what if you both thought the same thing? Like, that's a major bonding moment. I also thought that air vents were witches. (sighs) Yo, soulmates. No one else thought that. Well, it also just tells you if the person you're having a conversation with is supremely boring. <laughs> and you just don't, if you, if someone's supremely boring, you don't want to know them. It's the equivalent of t- asking somebody, oh, what do you like to do for fun? And them saying, I don't like to have fun. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever imagined, though. Like, ironically, that is so funny. Because I can't imagine anyone going, I don't like to have fun. Here's the thing. I work as a cashier and I cannot tell you the amount of times I ask people, what do you like to do for fun? And they say, oh, I'm boring. And I'm like, okay, well, conversation ended. I will ring up your groceries in silence. (laughs) (laughs) Literally, I'm like, okay, well, I'm fine. Bye. I don't know why people will admit to being boring, but that's not a turn on. My motto as a child when people called me weird, it's really stupid, but it was weird means unique and unique sounds like a unicorn. So therefore you have magic and you're way better than that person. That is a segue. (laughs) (laughs) I know, but that's what I used to literally say to people when they called me weird. I would just go, thank you. (laughs) 
Well, I did that too, but... I have a different belief system. <laughs> I personally do believe there are boring people out there. They exist, I have met them, and if that's you, sorry, you suck. You could be better, <laughs> but you decide a long time to not be better, so bye. <laughs> Anyone could be fun if they just let themselves. Yeah, just let your hair down, be fun. Shave off your Jonathan mustache. <laughs> I need to stop talking about that. I'm Dennis Quaid. I'm Dennis Quaid. Like, if you're talking to somebody and you're going to think about a future with them, whether it's, like, godparent to their children, actual aunt to their children, or maybe even the actual mother or father of their children, then, like, you should know what kind of things you're going to have to incorporate and see if you can live with them. Because there is no way my kids are not going to be calling it a pof. Um, that's very important to me. And if you can't hang with the poof, then you can't hang with me and we have to cut ties immediately. <laughs> All right, Eno, what's your question? All right, so my question is, if you were put into jail... What was the crime that got you there? Uh, we all know what I would be. I l public nudity. She would be in decent exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said you're pretty likely to end up doing it, but I feel like you would, if you were going to be nude in public, you'd probably put it, you'd probably do it in like somewhere that it's like allowed. So like, well, yeah, but we're trying to, we're saying if we were to be arrested, what is the most likely crime and I wouldn't be arrested ever, even though the uh, spam calls I keep getting uh, <laughs> seem to think otherwise. <laughs> she keeps getting harassed by robots that are like, there is a warrant out for your there arrest. There is a warrant out for your <laughs> arrest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if Ina, were, if Ina were to commit a crime, see, this is a hard one. Because you could go a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. You are the kind of person that are good until you snap. And so it just depends on what the snap is. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> One day she would just snap and spitefully break laws. Just like to if stick the purge the happened, I would be the most afraid of what you would do. Oh my goodness. No. Because you would, you would, I think you would really just that one day... You would like save up all your energy, especially if someone like pitch you off like two days oh, before the I purge. See what you mean. Like you would have also Marissa, but like I think <laughs> Nina, I would be afraid of what exactly would do. Like what? me, I would just be like, all right, let's flash everybody, run around naked, and maybe steal a necklace from someone. I don't know. Well, because because Ina would be very unpredictable. Like she would probably murder you, but how? You don't know. You can't prepare for it. I'd murder you and uh bake you into a pie and feed it to your father. <laughs> Full Sweeney Todd. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, oh. I just said that because I like to think I'm Arya Stark. <laughs> Full Arya Stark. Arya Stark is Sweeney Todd. True. So, I don't, I would say, I think Ina, without the purge coming into question, mm -hmm. I think you are most likely to be arrested for, like, a petty crime, for, like, yeah. Like stealing something. Like there was just something that mm -hmm. you wanted and you couldn't afford it. You know, honestly, what it's going to be is you accidentally forgot you put something in your bag and you walked out of a place. No, that's 100% true. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think if Ina were to really commit a crime, it would be after she snapped and she would snap and like do something really petty to spite someone she was mad at. So she would like go to their house and, like, steal their cat because they don't deserve it or something. Oh, yeah. Steal a cat. Oh, that's yeah. true. I would steal a cat. <laughs> I definitely think that it's thievery of some kind. What The what and the how. Yeah. Maybe is... I'll go and I'll steal Marissa's library book and hide it under my bed and forget about it. And then deny it. We've done that. You didn't get arrested, so... <laughs> Legend has it. I'm still racking up overdue fees to this day. You're prob your overdue fees are probably, like, $10 at the most. Who knows, Amy? It's been over 10 years since that happened. A dollar a year. I think that's about it. Somehow, I think you're right. But <laughs> one day, if, like, you know, like, if I ever got arrested, <laughs> like, for no reason, I just got arrested and they didn't tell me why, I would know that they finally found out that I <laughs> never gave that book back. They'd be like, oh, you're under arrest for XYZ thing, but also on top of it, you have to pay your $83 in library fines. See, and I never even got to read it because as soon as I got the book, Karina stole it and hid it. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember actually doing this, but it was under my bed, so I feel like that's pretty incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> that or Marissa framed you. Oh my goodness. Put under your bed that would be and was involved. like, oh, I lost Maybe it. Maybe she did. <gasps> Marissa didn't want to read it. And so she <laughs> framed me. I got it. it. I got it for fun. It wasn't a homework book. We're going to go to the next person because Marissa is most likely to commit murder. Oh, you're right. I'm going to say that. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you are so right. Like, if you're getting arrested, it's because you went hard. Yeah. And you just straight up murdered someone. <laughs> or, or maybe Marissa would get arrested for throwing poop at people's houses. You know, uh, also that, yeah, throwing direct <laughs> shit at house. That's like your lesser crime. If you were to go full on crime, murder. murder. But like if you, if we're just going for like most likely to actually accomplish in your lifetime, you're definitely going to throw poop at a house one day. I don't know what to tell or you. Or at least use that anonymous poop website where you can oh, mail poop to someone. But that's not illegal. Oh, I actually have plans to use that website. <laughs> Well, now the whole world knows. They'll all suspect you. If you've spurned her, look out. Yes. Whenever whenever anyone receives a gift from that website, know it was from me. Are you going to write on all of them, the poop fairy? <laughs> I, I'll start my own website. Oh, there you go. Yeah. From the poop fairy. There are, there are like three different websites that do that. So I can't imagine how many people a day get poop mailed to them, and now they'll all think it was me. Apparently enough to keep those businesses sustained. You're welcome, world. I am taking credit for things I did not do. That is an easy production fee, though. Like, you don't have to pay anyone to collect their shit. Yeah, but I feel like it's probably illegal to send human poop through the mail. Says who? Where's that law? It's clearly not, because it's a business. I don't know. I just feel like human poop is, like, especially not allowed. Oh, human poop in particular? I don't know. Yeah, so you'd have, you'd have to get cat poop or something, which would be easy, too. I haven't seen it written in law. I, I, I really doubt very highly there is a law... <laughs> That says you can't mail human feces. I just bet there. I just feel like there would be. There, there would be if people thought about it, but I don't think there is. I think here's the thing: you're not allowed to open people's mail. So how would they know if you sealed it up real tight in a box? Maybe even in a Tupperware. It stinks. Like if you could seal it up good enough where the smell might not be completely obvious. How they like, or in this case, you're you're sa- you're like mailing some kind of poop. But who's to say this is human poop versus cow poop, which you can definitely mail because farmers exist. Amy teaching us all how to break the law. So what Amy's saying is, sure, it's illegal, but you can find ways around it, and no one will ever know. <laughs> anarchy, complete anarchy. <laughs> all right, so I guess I'm gonna get arrested for mailing human feces because I guess Apparently. that's the thing now. You'll you'll get arrested for starting the trend. Don't 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 do that, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Disclaimer: the poop is not actually from me, and don't actually send human feces. I don't feel like this actually has to be said, but there it is. All right. I have a question that was submitted to us by at. Abby Rose C, Mm. as in the letter, at Abby Rose C. That is from Instagram. She asked us, what's the last thing that made you laugh so hard that you cried? I can answer this question very easily because it happened yesterday while I was with at Abby Rose C. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I was once again, you guys know that I do this a lot, but I was listening to that video of the just the worst voice crack in history there's this <laughs> <laughs> i'm laughing just thinking about it there there's this opera singer he's singing so beautifully and then all of a sudden just the most massive cartoonishly obscene voice crack happens and then he just keeps singing like it didn't happen and it's just so funny to me i'm proud of him for finishing his performance but also <laughs> If you just listen to it on repeat, it gets funnier every time you listen to it. I mean, I I mean, I I can't say that this is necessarily exactly the last time that this happened. Uh but the last time that I like really recall is uh my friends and I were watching 
a video of Wilfred Warrior Cat. If anyone knows who that is, it's this cat that has the buggiest eyes and an underbite and stuff. And this comedian did a voiceover of it, and he's like, "Is this a? a is this a?" F-? And I, I can't. I don't know why I can't swear when I'm doing this. <laughs> is this, <laughs> is this a freaking cat? Oh my goodness, that like, cat. Looks like grandma and stuff. And that we watched that video on repeat like 20 times in a row and we were all just like completely <laughs> dead. I think time. the last time that I laughed really hard, I don't know that I like cried from laughing, but the last time that I laughed really, really hard was definitely literally yesterday when... My friend Ashley told me that if I shaved my head, I would look like a testicle. <laughs> a very, <laughs> very nice comment from your friend. Just a very great comment. It's a compliment, actually. I sh- I'm thinking about shaving it now. I know, but like how... My question to her is, do you only ever see men who shave or wax down there? Because I feel like the general population has hairy testicles so i don't see why you shaving your head would make you look like a testicle i actually feel like most of the testicles i've seen have been shaved i feel like testicles don't grow hair as much wow is that a new trend i think that they grow hair but they don't grow hair as much as like the the mons does i is it still mons if it's a man i I, something like that the mons I think that grows a lot of hair, but the um, balls don't necessarily... Probably varies person by person. I have no experience with this, and I feel slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> the Mons. I just really like Mons. We haven't talked about Mons so much. The Mons pubis. Oh my goodness. Big Mouth is a fantastic show. Big Mouth's the best. And the episode about the Mons is my favorite episode. Which one? What happens in that episode? Oh no. I'm a Mons pusher. Oh, yeah, Mons pusher. <laughs> Missy, shout out to Missy, the character. She's my favorite. My favorite thing to laugh so hard that I cry to um, that's a video is that video where it's the cat on the ledge and they play the song Sail in the background. That's my favorite <laughs> video that's ever existed. <laughs> and- <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love that video too, but I often very often wonder is that cat okay how far did it fall (laughs) how far (laughs) it just plays all out please tell me i'm sure it's it's okay okay. cats always land on their feet (laughs) i know but it like jumped and threw its feet up like over its head (laughs) (laughs) basically the moral of this story is watch cat videos cat videos are the best videos they are or just buy a cat. My cat does funny things all the time. Cats are funny creatures. Actually, the the most recent animal video that I laughed at until I cried is the there's an old vine. Well, all vines are old now. But there Yeah. <laughs> there's a vine of a dog and I think what makes it so funny is one, it matches with the dog's mouth perfectly, and two, you're not expecting it to happen. But it's just a dog and then all of a sudden it jumps and goes, take me into your fucking arms. And like I cry every time oh, I watch oh, it. Oh, I know that it's vine. just so unexpected. <laughs> I think I have seen that one. Oh, I have, a, I have a very, this is a conversation starting question as opposed to a get to know you question. Um, it's very important to me to know about this particular question. So let's discuss it. Please, please enlighten me and tell me why do people hate on butt cracks but think that full butts are sexy? Um, And an example of this is people, no matter if it's a boy or girl, the second you get a plumber's crack, people are think you're gross. And people like think that whale tails are trashy, so it means like seeing butt crack with like some thong above it. They think that's trashy, but we'll pay big bucks to see a stripper. That's a great, great, great question. And also, I'd love to add on to it why cleavage is so attractive but butt cracks are not since it looks also essentially true. the same why don't we just have low rise like why can't we show butt cleavage i want to show butt cleavage they used to in the early 2000s i actually don't because it because i know that it's gross to show butt crack anytime my pens are even kind of low 
I start freaking out inside and I pull them up obsessively. Me too. But then also one other question. Why is it that girls nowadays like to wear pants that are so tight to their body that their entire butts are showing? Because full butts are sexy. Oh, you're right. You're right. That that yeah. was... That also, wasn't- underbutt is okay. Pe- girls like Daisy Dukes will show yeah. the underbutt, but That's not true. the overbutt. Why are overbutts not cute? Yeah, and also, why is underboob so underrepresented? Underboob is not my favorite kind of boob. I prefer side boob. top boob or side boob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, but... That's the thing. No one shows underboob. You're right. So what are what are with all of these double standards within really the same thing? Please tell us why our crevices uh, have different standards depending on where on our body they are located. Please reply to us. Yeah, please. I want everyone's answers to this question. Because I feel like maybe there's a scientific thing. I doubt it. I doubt it. I think that it's just humans being really weird hypocrites. I think it is humans being hypocrites. I think that no one... This is a case that's not been cracked over open yet. We need Sherlock Holmes on the case. Um, But please don't show us your crack, Sherlock Holmes. Yes, no, don't do that. No. When we say crack the case, we don't mean like butt crack. (laughs) Or do we? No, we don't. (laughs) Because like the thing too is... uh, like, I think a lot of people, when they reply to this question, because we do want you to reply to this question, you can DM us or anything. I don't care. I just really need to know your thoughts. But um, people are going to be like, well, boy bots, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. I will look at a full boy butt all day. But half of a... Jon b- Snow. Ooh, Jon Snow. Jon Snow's butt was so round. Ramsey Snow's butt and wasn't bad it either. it was not Kit Harrington's butt. It wasn't Kit it Harrington's was- butt? It was a body double? It wasn't. Oh. It was the cameraman. It was the cameraman's butt? Wow. That is what I heard. They had the cameraman being stumped If I am wrong, up. please call me out. Well, that cameraman. <laughs> I, I a guess. Plus. A plus. Nice butt. Literally <laughs> the best butt I've ever seen. It's a good butt. <laughs> but anyway, I will look at any butt all day long. I love looking at butts. I think most people love looking at butts. But then the second that there's a butt crack, I just get like, yeesh. Even if it's a girl... Even if it's a guy, you could be hot, you could be ugly, and if I'm seeing your full butt, I'm going to appreciate it more you know than what? like partial butt. You know and I what? would like to know I why. I disagree because in the music video for Girls Girls Boys, Brandon Yuri shows just the top of his butt, and I think it's very sexy. That whole video is quite sexy. Well, that is also Brandon Yuri. <laughs> it's Brandon. Excuse you. Sorry, sorry. I, yeah, I think that. Brendan Yuri is held to a different standard. It's like The Rock. If I were to see just a sliver of The Rock's butt, I would like it. I would be happy. See, okay, I'm <laughs> I'm looking it up right now just to confirm, and it The Rock's butt, Jon Snow's butt. Oh, okay. It was a butt double. Whether or not it was a cameraman, possibly that part was made up. Well, whoever's butt it was, a plus. That was a good butt. I would love to find this butt double and see them star in a movie and not use their own butt double. No double standards there, man. We want to see more of your butt. That is a famous butt right there. Such a good one. Kit Harrington's giving me the credit, but you deserve the credit, mysterious butt man. Don't be afraid to show us your face. Yeah, if you ever listen to this mysterious butt man who is Jon Snow's butt double, please (laughs) let us know who you are and also send pictures of that booty. But mostly let us know who you are so we can give you the proper credit for the butt that you contain. And also, um, please butt double in more movies. I don't... More movies. Please. Just get your butt out there. Show us to the us all. The world needs yeah. to see it. Yes. I thought you were going to say something, Ina. Oh, yes. I mean, I was going to say, uh, I, I don't want unsolicited nude pictures. <laughs> that but is true. Unsolicited butt pics, though, from Jon Snow's butt double is a Only whole different Only from story. the butt double. Yeah, but then a lot of people are going to like send us butt pics and claim that the butt double and they won't be. I don't want butt pics. Okay. Do not send us butt pics or Ina will faint. Yeah, Ina doesn't like butt pics. No nudes or we'll block you. And you don't want us to block you because we're fun and we like having you around. Send your nudes to my direct Instagram. Amy! <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Do we not about do not encourage I Amy. like naked bodies. Okay, Amy, I hate that. Stop it. Okay, fine. Maybe I'll cut this. Maybe. 
Anyway, John Snow's butt double. Maybe. Good job. I I will pledge America to that ass. Oh, yes. Yeah, now that That's is America's, America's ass. ass. Except it's in Britain. Move aside, Captain America. Captain America has a great ass. And there were parts of that movie in Endgame where I literally had to like hold my heart to my chest because that ass was just so beautiful. It was beautiful. But the thing I literally is- started... But it's, it ha- it doesn't hold a candle to the butt double of Jon Snow's ass. Right, but that one is British. So is that Britain's butt? Are you sure that the stunt double was British? Well, no. You don't know that, but it probably was. Probably was because... Because it is filmed in England. Yeah. yeah. Also, I just want to shout out to Daredevil's butt. That doesn't get enough <laughs> attention. It's a very Matt, good yeah. butt. Yeah, what's his name? Charlie Cox? Good butt. Yeah, there's one scene in particular... <laughs> Where, no spoilers, but he's, like, passed out on a rooftop, and someone runs on, and the first thing you see is just, like, his legs and butt laying there on the ground, and that's just the best shot of a butt that I've seen in a long time, other than Jon Snow, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see more, like, butts. Like, big butts. <laughs> like, I'd like to see Vincent D'Onofrio's butt. Ooh. I feel like that's, like, I want to see Thanos' butt. Why didn't we see Thanos' butt? Hulk butt was amazing. Amy does talk about this a lot. I really, really like I mean, Thanos' butt and Hulk butt. I cannot relate to this. I'm really not that into butts. You're not a butt girl? Not really. I had to become a butt girl because I have a butt that we made fun of for a long time, and then one day I realized actually that's a thing that people find attractive. So, like, I had to accept that butts are sexy, and now I just see butts everywhere and love them a lot. It's not Man. that I don't like a good butt. It's just I'm not itching to see every butt. I'm itching to see everything of everyone. Amy, that's so creepy. I think that you probably don't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. But there's just this morbid curiosity, even with, like, people that I'm like, I shouldn't want to see you naked, but, like, what does it look like? No. What about your own grandmother? <gasps> I bet it's ugly and I kind of want to laugh at it. No! <laughs> that is true. <laughs> She's never going to listen to this podcast, so Eloise calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. This is going on if way she, too if long. If she got butts. this far into the podcast, she's, she's like a reformed woman going to come towards our houses in the night. Well, also like, that. Yeah, she's going to come in the middle of the night and dump every bit of holy water she can get her hands on on top of each of us. True. All right, we can go on to the next question for Ina. Ina's uncomfortable. But I think we should do what? Two Parks and Rec characters are you? Okay, this is... I feel like Amy's is obvious. It's very, very easy. Like Amy both is just right off the cuff. Leslie Nope and Tom Haverford. <laughs> yes, the That's perfect exactly combination of say. yeah, because it's literally okay. her as a I person. Get that. Yeah, no, I see it. I was, I would, if I could have three, the third would be Andy Dwyer. Yes, but also if you could have four, we'd mix a little John Ralphio in there, and then it literally is Amy in every oh, way. You're right. No, John Ralphio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. But we only get two and those top two. Yes. Leslie. For sure. Tom. No, those make sense. Uh, yep. No, that's true. Leslie, because honestly, you should all want gifts from Amy. She is the best gift giver ever. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you ever are blessed enough to receive a gift from Amy, get ready to have your mind blown. But if you ever have to get her a gift, get ready for it to never be good enough. Like, she won't make you feel bad about it, but, like, you'll see what she gave you, and you'll you'll never forgive yourself. I'm very happy that you love my gift giving. I'm very proud of it. Like, you could get Amy a mansion, and she'd still find a way to up you, like. <laughs> and she wouldn't even mean to. That's the thing. Right. She's just like, I thought you would really like this. And I went a little over my budget because I just really think that you deserve to have this. And it's like the most extravagant thing you can imagine. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I really need Amy to get rich someday because uh, then the gifts would really be good. Oh, you know it. I mean, like they're already superb, but... Oh, if Amy got rich, then I would be rich because she'd get me something fantastic and I could sell it. Like a giraffe then... yacht. You would sell a giraffe yacht, Ina? No, no, I'd keep it. Oh my goodness. If Amy got rich, 
oh she she would you okay okay blah, blah, blah. the only thing that i would want with like a ton of money is to donate to charity so i feel like amy would know exactly what charity i would want to donate to and she'd just be like i donated five million dollars ten thousand dollars to or, or that <laughs> so I, I really think it depends yeah, on how i don't know how rich i am in this scenario true well <laughs> however rich you are you donated a certain amount of money to some causes that i care about one of which being hyperacusis hyperacusis is a very little known disorder where you go the opposite of deaf so that every sound is like hypersensitive in your ears and it hurts oh wow and there isn't a cure yet so everyone please donate to that cause thank you yeah let's stop people from getting their ears hurt by actually listening yes because we need yes. people to listen to, to our, our podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Um, I feel like I'm going to do Marissa next. Okay. And I'm thinking Marissa is a mix of April Ludgate. Gary. And Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Gergen. <laughs> Honestly, that is a very unorthodox combination, but I feel like it does get to the heart of who I am. It gets to the heart of who you are. You've got like, <laughs> like cynicism, the like need for anger, but wouldn't a- like the need for like murder, but wouldn't actually do it. Like the Adams family style, right. like morbidness mixed with the fun, loopy, like carefree, very clumsy thing. And wholesome. But also he's clumsy and has just awkward moments. Yeah. I mean, also though, the fact Gary is actually super good at everything he does, yes. but it gets underappreciated yes. by everyone. Well, he's happy with his life, though. Yes. He is wholesome, and he really has the perfect life, but he doesn't yeah. think so, and everyone else pretends Are he Are you doesn't. saying I don't appreciate things? Well, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> he's happy with his life, but he doesn't realize how good he's got it, you know? Okay, cool. That's this. I like this. Unconventional, but true. April Ludgate, Gary Gergich, Yes. Okay, Ina. Ina's turn. Mm-hmm. See, I want to say you've got some Anne in there, but like... I wanted to say Anne too. Right, but you're like, she's really not that fun, but like Ina's like super fun. Well, she might be, here we go, an Anne-Andy oh, combination. That's so true, actually, because she can get like so goofy and hilarious and <laughs> fun and sweet, but also is like a realist yeah. and like knows what's going on and is sensible and very smart and grounded mm-hmm. and has a dry sense of humor sometimes and she's like she's like pure being like every all her friends love her like that's so true all of her friends think she's a sunfish also she's like andy dwyer because her favorite food is butter that's yes. true <laughs> butter oh that is a perfect combination butter my buns and call me a biscuit <laughs> The frog is in the toboggan. <laughs> That's um, a line from a uh, musical I wrote in third grade. Excellent. In fact, uh, the character that said it was called Crazy Iki Waka. Butter my buns and call me a biscuit. The frog is in the toboggan. Yes. Everyone should love Clearly that. Crazy a masterpiece. Why, why is this not on Broadway right now? <laughs> this is well-written gold, Would I think. have won 5,000 Tonys. Because there are 5,000 yeah. Tony categories. Not. Right. Yes, um, there are. And uh, definitely <laughs> they would make would more been, just for your musical. It's also, it was right. so good that it's going to win years and years and years in a row, even past its eligibility date. Right. They would just be like, and once again, another year that nothing right. has beaten. Right. Ina's third exactly. grade musical that is unnamed. It's called Rahanna. Okay, it's called Rahanna. Um, and this was before I knew who Rihanna was, and it is not supposed to be mixed up with Rihanna. Isn't her name pronounced Rihanna? I think it might be. I think she pronounces it Rihanna. And no one else but, does. Yeah, everyone else still calls it Rihanna. Like, I feel like I've seen multiple interviews where she comes on, she's like, hi, I'm Rihanna. And then immediately after the person interviewing goes, so, Rihanna. And it's like... <laughs> It's also like um, how in Game of Thrones, uh, the name was Cersei, but also people pronounced her like Cersei and Red. Like, no one in the show could get the character's name right either. That's so true. I feel like even Tyrion said Cersei sometimes. Yes. You know what 
especially bothered me, though, is that every time after a Game of Thrones episode, the the writers would be talking about stuff that was really obvious if you'd just watched the episode, which everyone had. Um, and they would pronounce and everything they wrong. they pronounce every character's names wrong. Everything wrong in general. Oh, and also... I've just met so many people and seen so many people online talking about Game of Thrones pronouncing Daenerys Danieris. And I'm like, get your uneducated butt off of the internet and out of my life. Just because Danny is her nickname. Right. But like, <laughs> just because it's D A E. Not butts again. And, but that still wouldn't be Danieris. No one goes Daenerys. Actually, someone probably does, and I would accept that. But it isn't Danny Ares. That doesn't even make sense. No. But this is a bit that Marissa came up with. Is it? Um, and I don't. Oh, I don't know if you remember this. Um, it's what would they be like to marry? It's a very good question. Um, so we're this. This is a bit we just give a character or a person, and we say what life married life with them would be like. I'm excited. Let's go. Donald Duck. Oh my goodness. Okay. Donald Duck would be a terrible husband. Yeah, he would not be a good husband. <laughs> he flies off the handle at the drop of a hat. He's like a toddler where he's triggered by things that just make no sense. And, and then he like... You can't understand what he's saying, like, ever. He has yeah, the most giant say. speech impediment. It's like... <laughs> I think... Also, if you could understand what he's... Like, if you spoke his weird duck language, I think that you would still, like, not understand him because he kind of... I get the fact that he, like... I don't know that it's mumbling, but he, like, slurs his words together too much. And, like, it isn't even the duck language. Like, all the other ducks speak like regular people, and then there's just Donald Duck being like... Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. And everyone else is like, hello. Yeah. And it's like, what? Right. Also, I... I mean, just the fact that he's a duck, their genitalia is corkscrew, and I just feel as though that would be kind of uncomfortable. Well, he's also Disney, so he doesn't have any genitalia. Yeah, you can tell because he doesn't wear pants. <laughs> you can fully see that there is no genitalia to be had. Disney is PG-13 true, tops, true. and even then, that is rare. Another one. What would it be like? To marry Peter Pettigrew. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would do your bidding. I think he would be very subservient as a husband. That's true. If you That's don't true. care he about would. looks, like if you don't care that your husband is literally crusty, like he has <laughs> crust growing upon his skin, then you might work out well with him. He He is very unhygienic. Like he does not maintain his appearance or keep washed or even trim his nails. But, you know... He also will bring diseases into your home. He certainly will. He'll vaccinated. bring the plague. He is a rat. Yeah. <laughs> he is a rat. He will bring the plague. He probably has the plague, which is why he's so crusty. Probably. Some kind of new plague. He'll also rip off his own finger. Okay, he, I would say he will cut off his whole hand for you, so... That's true. Yeah. He, he would. He'll do whatever you want him to do, unless you want him to take charge, in which case he physically mm -hmm. cannot. He also, though, will not be able to make his own friends. He will be the ball and chain, like follows you one step behind so that he can like interact with your friends because he can't make his own also he's scared of everything so i feel like there are some things he won't do just because he's too much of a coward <laughs> don't marry him either is there someone we think we should marry there are many people i think we should marry he's like an okay peter Pettigrew is like if that's your type then yeah but like if crusty is your type i would much rather marry donald duck than Peter Pettigrew. Yeah, I think I'd rather marry Peter Pettigrew, but he would annoy me and I would divorce him eventually. That is a questionable decision. <laughs> well, I mean over Donald Duck, though. I would marry him over Donald Duck. Donald Duck is too mean. I wouldn't. But I wouldn't. I'd have to marry Donald Duck. I could get a divorce. Well, then, either way you I could wouldn't. get a divorce. That's a cop-out of answering this question. <laughs> I would still marry Donald Duck over Peter Pettigrew. Though. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking of an ultimate husband and I have, I th I have a good contender. Optimus Prime. You would marry him. He has a sexy, deep voice. Very sexy, deep voice. He is like five times my size. Five times your size. He's of metal. tall. That's tall is good. Made of metal, a con. 
I will give you that. Uh, <laughs> also, he's literally made of car parts. I don't like cars very much. Self lubricating, but not the kind of, uh, of lubricating <laughs> you don't want. Like <laughs> gasoline and oils all over you. Like how no, nasty. You're right. Gross. Um, if you're looking for just like a like an asexual relationship, like a romantic yet asexual relationship, I can see how okay. he could be a good partner. I mean. He's a good guy, mm-hmm. strong morals, brave. Yeah. A leader. Takes charge. Wholesome. Yeah. He would so devote, you could tell he's the kind that will like just hold your face in his arms and be like, you are the light of my life. And you'd be like, oh. But it would probably hurt because his hands are also made of car parts. So I don't feel like that would be comfortable to have but him hold your be, face. But it would be, he's, I'm just trying to say the romance is there. Like the kind of I like absolute. Like- in order to feel romantic with each other, he would have to turn into a car so that you know you had to sit on his seat or something. Like that's the only comfortable position you two could be together in. Okay. If he's good for emotional dating. What is that like philia where you're like in actually in love with an inanimate object? I do not know, but But they have those where somebody like got married to an amusement there park are ride. People who have married their cars. So like if you have that then he's the perfect man for you. He's the perfect man for you. I'm going to look this up right now so I can edit it in. If you have object sexuality or object philia, I should have known that because it's objectum sexuality with cars. Object philia. That's a um, much more obvious name than I would have thought. I know, right? Me too. I thought it was going to be something else. Okay. What would it be like to marry Aquamarine from the movie Aquamarine? She seemed fun and bubbly. Very pretty. She's really, really kind, but also not that smart. Yeah. And like not just in the way that she was like new to the world on land and society or whatever, but she also just in general made like some very questionable decisions. I mean, she's very pretty. I feel like she would cheat on me because she's so pretty and like she would just like see someone and like not realize our human customs of like monogamy right most of the time so she would just like just constantly cheat on me and then come home and be like what i wasn't supposed to do that i'm like you use that the last 20 times you did this to me aquamarine why do i keep giving you another chance right or she would like not know that kissing would count as cheating on someone or like various activities yeah. like she wouldn't even also mean i to. just turned into harvey fire scene out of anger that she cheated on me 20 times i hope you all heard that, that. was a terrible harvey fire scene impression i can't believe you i can't believe you cheated on me oh that was better that was better thank you yeah i it was a full harvey fire scene then but it was like kind of there and i had to make the joke sorry ina yes what is <laughs> the good thing about her though is that she could give me those starfish earrings that compliment you and oh, that yeah. is something i've always wanted those are freaking cute yeah I need those compliments in my life. I need that kind of positivity in my life. You got positivity. Okay, this is a callback to that first episode, I think, but it is... Clayton and Not Clayton and Maurice. We're not talking about that. (laughs) I was going to say the ultimate... I'm always going to talk about that. No. The ultimate... (laughs) The ultimate... I'm Dennis Quaid. The ultimate wife would be Esmeralda. Yes. She's sassy. She's funny. As much as I love Meg and Jessica Rabbit, Esmeralda has the whole package. She has the whole package. I I think that Meg might be too sassy and too distant. A little too cynical, yeah. Jessica Rabbit might be too clingy and too head over heels for you. Well, also, it's not her fault, but she is so attractive that like anytime you go anywhere there's just gonna be a thousand people that are so jealous of you that like you might fear for your like safety also probably true but esmeralda she's sexy she's like gorgeous she is sassy she's spunky she's funny she is independent she stands up for what's right right like you just know someone like looks at you wrong she will fight them for you she also knows magic tricks and has a pet goat. She's a pet goat. I think she's our winner of uh, best person to marry this po- this episode. Yeah. Let's do like Agreed. one short one. What food matches your personality? Mm. Corn. 
<laughs> I was going to say corn. <laughs> corn on the cob, specifically. I am corn. Um, corn because yellow is my favorite color. True. Um, I only know how to tell corny jokes. True. Um, I love things that you can smother in butter. True. I would love to be smothered in butter. Oh. Um, corn is just fantastic, and it also grows really tall, and it also is just the best thing ever, so. That's good. And corn is, I mean, it, it stick, it, it, it's its own thing, you know? Like, it won't get digested, like, put it through lots of stuff, and corn is still itself when it gets pooped out. True. So put me through lots of trials, and I will still. And it be also me. gets stuck in your teeth, which is very annoying, as you can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say I'm still thinking actually, because that was actually way more in depth than I was gonna get. I think that I am <laughs> rainbow sherbet because not everybody gives it a chance, but they should, and it's the best, but. You know, it's, like, very underrated. And that's how I feel that I am. Sure, Bert. Um, I'm going to say I am a milkshake because I bring all the boys to the yard. <laughs> and, and they're, they're like, like, it's, it's better, better than, than yours. yours. <laughs> Damn right. It's better than yours. I could teach you, but I have to charge. I don't know if that was fully serious, but... I don't know if I was fully serious either, but it is fine. <laughs> but Ina was fully serious, so that's good. Yes, she was. I am serious, Black. We might revisit this question when we actually want to take the time to answer it. You're right. <laughs> Before we end the show, I just want to let everybody know that if you're enjoying what you're hearing, please, please, please send it to your friends. We'd love for you to pass this on. We don't advertise the show um, except on our own like personal circles. So if you guys think that you have a friend who would like it, show them the show. Let them know, hey, fess up is the show for you. And then ask them the questions and then they'll have to listen because they're just so ridiculous sometimes. Yeah, so share the show, subscribe to the show on however you listen to it, download the episodes. Um, If you can leave a comment somewhere, do that. We're on YouTube now, so listen to us on YouTube, share that around. Some people like YouTube more than other things, so if that's your friend, do it. If you want to ask a question, you can reach us on Twitter, you can uh, at fessup underscore podcast. You can send us an email, thefessuppodcast at gmail.com. You can Instagram us, put it in a comment on our Instagram pictures, or guest DM us on Instagram. No one's done that yet, but maybe they will. Um, that's at Fess Up Podcast. We have a Facebook page at Fess Up Podcast. Um, just interact with us. Get to know us. You guys can talk, too. I don't have to be <laughs> talking. I don't know. It's sponsored by your ass, not mine. So you can do the talking. It's sponsored by my ass still. Uh, but yeah, if you answer the questions, let us know your answers to the questions that we've asked today or any other day. Um, let us know your friends' ans- uh, answers. Let us know what's happened if you brought this up in conversation, if people stopped being your friends because of it. Yeah, let me know if you got <laughs> a boyfriend or girlfriend from asking these questions at a first date because they're much more fun than the standard small talk questions. Yeah, if you've gotten a boyfriend or girlfriend from asking these questions, I think that's a relationship built to last. I think so. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah, follow us, do all that stuff, share the show, tweet at us, hashtag UBFest, if you are UBFest with us. And I'm I'm just going to take a moment here to make a desperate plea to Jonathan Van Ness. Please. Free the poof. Free the poof, Jonathan. Free it. Free that poof. This has been Fess Up. I've been Amy. I'm Marissa. And I'm Ina. Free the poof.